Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at Asper Humans, which features some of the new cards from the latest anthology expansion like Thalia, Guardian of Thraben and Meddling Mage, which we'll take a look at first. Two mana for a 2-2 Human Wizard, that as it enters the battlefield we have to choose a non-land card name and spells with the chosen name can be cast, which can be a very powerful effect. Just the other day, for example, I was playing against the Treasure Hunt combo deck and naming Treasure Hunt with Meddling Mage against them is pretty much game over. Of course, not every matchup is going to be that extreme, but you can usually do pretty good work with the Meddling Mage, especially if you know what deck you're up against, so you can make an educated guess about what card they might be holding or what card could give you the most trouble during the game. And then another card that synergizes quite well with Meddling Mage is Kitesail Freebooter, 2 mana for a 1-2 human pirate with flying, and when the Freebooter enters the battlefield, target opponent has revealed her hand, you can choose a non-creature, non-land card from it, and exile that card until the Freebooter leaves the battlefield, so it gives us access to a bit of hand disruption in creature form, and of course getting to see the opponent's hand means we now know what to name with the Meddling Mage, and then to complete our 2 mana disruptive humans, we also have the full playset of Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, a 2 1 legendary human soldier with first strike, saying non creature spells cost 1 generic mana more to cast. And we don't have any non creature spells in this deck ourselves, except for the adventure half of a giant killer. So Thalia is going to be a one sided effect, which can be very powerful, especially against control decks, which essentially don't have any creatures. So we're making all their spells cost one more, which is very hard to deal with, especially if you then pair it with the disruption provided by Kitesail Freebooter and Meddling Mage. So these are the cards we want to draw the most against control decks. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at 1 mana we've got the full playset of Dauntless Bodyguard, just to give us some early pressure as a 1 mana 2-1 Human Knight that can enter the battlefield and essentially protect one of our creatures. We can sacrifice a Bodyguard to give that creature indestructible. So against control decks, once again, we can protect one of our key creatures like Thalia, maybe a Freebooter that has an important card underneath or a Meddling Mage. And then we also have the full playset of Giant Killer, which can tap creatures down with the activated ability, so it can maybe clear a path for our creatures to attack. But we can also use the Adventure first, destroying target creature with power 4 or greater, so it gives us that nice flexibility of potentially playing it out to get some early damage in, or we can hold it to maybe destroy creature first and then play the creature half afterwards. Then uh, we've covered all our 2 drops, and then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Militia Bugler, a 3 mana 2-3 human soldier with vigilance, and when a bugler enters the battlefield, look at the top 4 cards of your library, you may reveal a creature card with power 2 or less from among them and put it into your hand, and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And every single creature in this deck fits the criteria of the Bugler, except for the Banalish Marshal, which we'll get to in a second. So a very high hit rate on the Bugler can help us find those key disruptive creatures. And then if we're in the matchup itself, of course, we can kind of pick and choose based on how many creatures we reveal, which creature would uh, kind of fit into the current situation better. If we're up against a control deck, then finding these disruptive two drops is going to be key. If we're up against a creature deck, then finding one of our removal creatures like Deputy, Hostage Taker or Giant Killer might be more important, so the Bugler also gives us that flexibility, which can be nice. And then next up we've got the full playset of Banalish Marshal, which we can't find with a Bugler, so it better be good, but the Banalish Marshal definitely delivers as a 3-mana 3-3, giving other creatures we control plus 1 plus 1, so this can definitely ramp up the pressure and help us close out the game once we get to early disruption down. And then we've got the full playset of Deputy of Detention, which is not a human, it is a Vidalcan Wizard, but we should still be able to cast it pretty reliably, and we can always name a Wizard with the Unclaimed Territory instead of Human, since we do also have Meddling Mage, which is a Wizard, so then it kind of takes care of our blue mana for the Deputy and the Meddling Mage at once. And when the Deputy enters the battlefield, we can exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls and all other non-land permanents that player controls, with the same name as the exile permanent, until Deputy of Detention leaves the battlefield, so some nice flexible removal. We can also potentially protect our Deputy if we play a Bodyguard afterwards, and of course the disruption provided by Freebooter, Thalian Meddling Mage also works well with the Deputy, so we do have some built-in protection. And then last but not least we have the full playset of Hostage Taker as a 4 mana 2-3, and when Hostage Taker enters battlefield we can exile another target creature or artifact, until Hostage Taker leaves the battlefield, and we can cast that card for as long as it remains exiled and spend mana as though it were mana of any type to cast that spell. So we can take away a creature or artifact from the opponent and then play it ourselves, 
and then if the hostage taker dies and we've already played the card we've stolen they will no longer get it back so that's pretty nice too and then going over the mana base of course we do need a ton of white mana to cast our banalish marshal but every single land in this deck can produce white mana and of course one of the appeals of playing a tribal deck is that we get to play with unclaimed territory which is a nice untapped land that doesn't cost us any life and can also potentially name wizard in order to cast our deputy detention so the mana base is very smooth in this deck every single land almost comes into play untapped and we only have eight shock lands so we don't need to pay too much life and the godless shrine and hallowed fountain also help the glacial fortress and isolated chapels come into play untapped so i've been very happy with the mana base and the cool thing about this deck is that it can only get better as more humans get printed much like it's a modern counterpart that only really saw the light of day once kindsale freebooter and unclaimed territory were printed so we could definitely use some upgrades in some slots the one drops especially could use a few upgrades and we could maybe use an extra lord that gives all humans plus one plus one but i'm sure that we'll see those cards sooner rather than later so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does all right we're on the draw with a very solid hand let's see what we're up against Forest. Ramp decks can be tough matchups sometimes because the disruption from Thalia and Freebooter is not always super effective. Could see a Grow Spiral here. Probably still lead with Thalia and uh, take it from there. So they're probably going to spiral in response here. And then next turn, I can decide between playing Marshall, maybe Meddling Mage, naming Nissa. They're playing white as well. It's going to be Paradise Druids. Of course, with Thali in play, they won't necessarily be able to play a Nissa next turn, but they will be able to with an extra land. And once Nissa hits the battlefield, it's going to be somewhat tough to get rid of. So I think I do Meddling Mage, naming Nissa, since I assume my opponent's playing it. So, let's name human, already have our blue mana, get in for two. Play our giant killer, could hold it to maybe kill an Uro, but they're pretty far from escaping it. And I don't mind the extra pressure, especially once we play Banalish Marshal. So Nissa. Got to make sure to name the right one who shakes the world. In paper, if you can kind of describe the card, even without knowing the exact name, that's enough. But on Arena, we do need to put an actual name in. All right, more meddling mages. Not sure what to name with the second one. Could be Uro, could be Hydroid Crisis. Probably Leaning Crisis. Um... So do I want to play Banalish Marshal or do I Meddling Mage naming Krasis? I think I name Krasis and wait a turn on the Banalish Marshal. But uh, could also potentially steal Krasis with Hostage Taker, which is pretty fun. So maybe I'm supposed to wait. I'm fine to trade the Giant Killer. So Hydroids. I can't wait to draw a Freebooter to see how many cards we've named correctly here. Thassa's Intervention is a little bit unexpected. Alright, time to play Marshall. Gonna get countered. And then I don't think I attack with the meddling mages quite yet. Alright, point's gonna ramp with roots. Aha, so they might be a goal stack after all. Now, a cool thing we could also do is Hostage Taker exiling my own Meddling Mage and then replay Meddling Mage naming something else. But don't have enough mana to do everything here.
And now I can attack with all. And our opponent has to block. Well, hopefully there's no sweeper incoming, since that would be bad. Hostage Taker can also exile her own creature to kind of prepare for a sweeper, so that if the opponent um, does play one, we at least get the exile creature back here. I would probably need to play around Settle the Wreckage. So I could do the Hostage Taker Meddling Mage trick. So let's go for it. And then probably exile the one with Nissa, which is less bad than if they play Giant Hydroids. So that happens. I'll replay. Name Subtle. And I don't know if I want to attack with all in case they bounce the Subtle the Wreckage Meddling Mage, but. Uh, let's be a little bit conservative here and keep the other Meddling Mage back. Just as an extra layer of insurance. Flicker of Fates, okay. And then I'm just, let's see, this is the Settle one. Well, I'm just gonna rename it. There's no real window where they can settle the wreckage me, I don't think. All right. Well, we'll never know what the opponent was holding here, but I'm guessing at least one of them was Settled Wreckage. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Uh, double Thalia's a little awkward, but still a fine hand. Thalia is usually a creature that tends to eat removal spells, so having a second one's not the end of the world. And against Watery Grave, Thalia's usually pretty good. So can get Thoughtery shirts, but it's gonna be a diligent excavator instead. Alright, so opponent must be on maybe a Cathus combo deck if they're in these colors. So I could name Cathus with Meddling Mage or Mox Amber. But I'm not 100% sure what they're onto here. I think for now I'll just play the Banalsh Marshal. That also lets us attack with Thalia. And then maybe next turn we'll Meddling Mage them. Alright, there's a green mana, so Keth is confirmed. Hostage Taker's pretty good too here. Can start by attacking. Yeah. I could regret not going for the Meddling Mage play here since one Excavator could still be pretty bad for me. So I guess we'll name Kathis. Gonna be an Uro for now. Urza's Ruinous Blast could also be an issue. Although they can't cast it at the moment without a legendary creature in play. See the Mox Amber. They could still get access to Cathus with Lazav. So it's also possible I should have named Mox Amber with the Meddling Mage instead of uh, Cathus. But her opponent is under quite a bit of pressure. So I can bugle to maybe look for another meddling mage or freebooter, or I can hostage take an excavator or even the mox amber. Think I'm leaning bugler. And there's a meddling mage. So let's hit. And then we'll mage. Probably naming Lazav. 
They can't really Runus Blast me next turn. If they escape Uro, I can just Hostage take it. So we'll name Lozaf the Multifarious. And now they shouldn't have access to Cathis anymore. But of course they do have the Fairy that can bounce a Meddling Mage at some point. Oath of Kaya can also take one out. But it does take their entire turn. There's Cathis in the graveyard, the Fairy, Jace. Opponent takes out the uh, Lazav, Meddling Mage. Not sure what that implies. Alright, opponent scoops it up. Well, against combo decks, Meddling Mage is definitely at its best. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and this hand could be okay against some decks, not great against the creature deck if Freebooter's gonna miss, but we'll try. Temple of Abandon, not exactly the start we were hoping for. Still gonna lead with Thalia. Get in for two. Alright, so... Some sort of four-color land-based uh, deck. Well... Not exactly what we want to be facing here with our Thalia and Freebooter opener. So now I could Deputy the Dryad, and then if they play their uh, Dread Presence, I can take it with Hostage Taker, which I think is the more threatening card. And then Dryad plus the Fable Passage is also very good with Dread Presence, so we. Don't want to let them untap with the Dryad if possible. But if I Hostage Taker now, it's a little bit more mana efficient so that if I draw a land next turn, I can still play 3 drop plus 2 drop, which would potentially work out a little bit better. So let's go for the Hostage Taker now. Opponent gets their escape back, but now if we draw land, perfect. We can uh, deputy the Dread Presence and Freebooter the uh, escape. So we'll start here. Get in for four. So they're pretty far from the city's blessing still. Now up to seven permanents, could be eight. Puts a second sword within the graveyards. All right, I guess next turn it could have the city's blessing. We get to play the dryads and attack with most of our creatures. Don't care if the Hostage Taker trades at this point with the Branch Walker. Thalia can attack. Opponent's top decks presumably better than ours, and we see Field of the Dead, but uh, two Temples of Abandon and two Swamps, so still pretty far from actually getting that first zombie token. But it is going to be tough to beat once they get it going. So now they can block with the Swordtooth, so we only get to send the Freebooter. Yeah, I don't think I quite want to attack with everyone. Best draws here. 
Militia Bugler finding more action. Banolish Marshal would be good. More hostage takers. More deputies. That's a lot of mana. Scape shift. Uh oh. Well. Opponent's gonna get to make some zombies here. And if we don't top deck Deputy of Detention to get rid of all of them, we'll be in trouble. They also got a Blast Zone, which can potentially get rid of some of our creatures. But they did not make any zombies here. Since they got two Temple of Malady and two Field of the Dead. So I'm a little surprised by that. Found a Meddling Mage. I might want to hold the Meddling Mage since I don't quite know what to name at the moment. Just get in with Freebooter once again. So let's say play the Meddling Mage just to add a 2-2 to the board. Next turn it can go block, block. Take 5-6 and it could be dead. And they wouldn't be able to blast soon in time, so... I guess the added pressure is just enough reason to play this. And then I probably just name Escape to the Wilds. Could also name the uh, Dread Presence, but they won't have a land to follow up with. Although then again, Escape would cost 6 mana, so they probably can't cast anything super relevant afterwards. But if they somehow get rid of the Freebooter, then I guess having one naming Escape is fine. Not sure here. Oh, they just have a land. They get to trigger Field of the Dead now. Alright. Banolish Marshal, not bad. Although I think it's only gonna help me attack with the Freebooter for two. What happens if I send everyone here? Opponent's got four blockers. Yeah, that's not gonna end well for me. And there's Golos, makes sense. There was another card we could have named with a meddling mage for sure. Although I don't know if we've seen any blue mana. Just gets a field of the dead. That's a lot of zombies. So Bugler into deputies, probably our best sequence. Giant killer kills a Surtooth, but... Opponent still has way too many blockers out. And our opponent's going to be able to take the blast zone up to two, and then kill all two drops potentially. Which is bad news. So they'll get their escape back. We'll lose our freebooter, which is the most important part here. Top deck deputy could still do it. There's escape. Finds a bunch of goodies. So their opponent's got approximately a million zombies. Hostage taker. I can hostage take my own deputy, play it, get rid of all the zombies. I'll have enough to win here, I think. They will get their Dread Presence back. But we should have just enough attackers. Wow, what a game. Let's 
sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Not a super exciting hand, but might still be keepable. This might be a hand where I hold the giant killer, because the pressure it provides is kind of negligible without a Banalish Marshal. So, let's just play a Plains and Pass. Opponent is on Steam Vents, so probably not going to get much use out of the adventure. And then we want territory naming wizards to play deputy if needed. Bodyguard can protect Thalia, so that's nice. And then I'll probably just run out to Giant Killer, as I don't expect it to kill anything. All right, we're kind of on empty here, hoping to draw Militia Bugler, Meddling Mages. I guess now uh, Hostage Taker would be good too. Glacial Fortress, not so much. Well, still playing the Deputy here and hoping they don't have uh, Storm's Wrath next turn. Although I guess they wouldn't be able to with uh, Thali in place, so they would have to wait another turn. Opponent takes two. And the Royal Science. I think I'm gonna ignore those and just attack the opponent's life total here. Ooh, spicy. Bladewing the Risen, so it's a reanimator deck. Well, there's our Hostage Taker. Uh, turn late. Could still play Hostage Taker and kind of flicker one of my creatures if I replay them afterwards. Probably still go face here. I'm probably just gonna hold the Hostage Taker, to be honest. And can name human. And maybe that can steal whatever they reanimate next. Right, Ritual of Soot kills almost everything. Get to keep our Thalia at least. And now I'm probably just gonna steal the Mind Stone. Playing Hostage Taker, Exiling Deputy could have maybe worked out better in hindsight against Ritual of Soot. Opponent didn't have the mana to sacrifice Mindstone in response. But I guess we also couldn't play it because of Thalia. So that's, I guess, a little awkward. So probably should have played this Fountain Tapped instead. Discards Darigaz. Well, they need another land for a 5 mana reanimation spell. And there it is. They're gonna Dragon Fire the Hostage Taker. Get her Mindstone back. And Sarkon. Alright, I'm kind of digging this Dragon Reanimator deck from the opponent. Meddling Mage, oh boy. What do I possibly name with Meddling Mage? It's kind of difficult to say. Could name Dragonfire, could name maybe another Ritual of Soot is safer. Next turn I also get to ultimate this. So I probably need to attack the Scions and then play Meddling Mage and try and kill them next turn, which is unlikely. Roman, help! Don't think there's a great reason for me to play this land out. Opponent gets to dig pretty deep, discards another Sarkon. And Bond of Revival on Bladewing, which gets back another dragon. Yeah. 
Of all the reanimation spells, Bond of Revival was probably the most likely one. Hmm. What is my strategy here? Deputy of Detention. So close, yet so far away. Can exile one dragon, I can put him to one. I mean, it's probably still worth it, right? And then between Bladewing and Darigas. Probably want to exile Darigas. And then if my opponent does nothing next turn, I could s technically still kill them. Although in that case, I might be better off just waiting and attacking with everyone next turn, so the Thalia effect is still in action and the Meddling Mage. Because yeah, my play here kind of relies on the opponent not playing another blocker, but in that case I would also just kill them next turn. So I guess we should just stay back. So the Scion's back in ultimate range. And another Bond of Revival, this time on Dracusas. Ouch. That's gonna hurt. So yeah. Playing against Bruce is kind of uh, tricky sometimes with Meddling Mage, because you don't know for sure what to name. So it is a card that's a little better against more established decks. But uh, yeah, Bond of Revival was definitely likely to be in their deck somewhere. And a Dauntless Bodyguard shows up a little late to the party. Alright, we'll let our opponent finish us here. I guess we're technically representing Settler Wreckage. But uh, no respect. Alright, GG's. Opponent had a fun deck. The two Planeswalkers definitely synergize nicely with the Bladewing the Risen here, so should maybe try that myself at some point. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Missing the third land, but uh, in the meantime, can play some of our disruptive two drops. Well, we could be up against Monorats. Now, I could name Shock here with Meddling Mage, but I'm probably just gonna play Thalia, which also means they won't be able to shock Thalia in the first place. Do have to watch out for Goblin Chain Whirler, so getting Marshall in play to protect Thalia from one damage is gonna be pretty key. Alright, there are blue reds. Kiln Fiends. Okay, Kiln Fiend is scary. Giant Killers has power, so if we get up to, I guess, four mana with Thalia in play, this could kill Kiln Fiend. But Thalia also makes the Kiln Fiend deck a lot uh, worse since they do tend to play a lot of one mana cantrips. So what do I name with Meddling Mage is a question. We do have three of them, so we get a couple shots at it. Probably start with Shock, which I assume is in their deck and could kill Thalia. And then I could stay back to block the Kiln Fiend, but I also want to get this game over with. Put on Chumps, that's aggressive. Alright, well, opponent concedes to the uh, Thalia plus Meddling Mage combo, so, you know, don't always get to see the ramifications of a Thalia and a Meddling Mage, but as we saw here, they can be very effective. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Green, black, okay. Let's see what they're working with. Alright, a Knight of the Reliquary follow the Thrand deck. That's pretty spicy. So, 
probably just take Crucible for now, which is pretty good with the Fable Passage. And then Giant Killer might be able to kill the Knight of the Reliquary as well. Not gonna worry too much about Follow the Thran. At least not yet. So there's a Knight. 3-3 three, three at the moment. We'll attack into it with the bodyguard. If they want to block, that's fine by me. Now the knights can ramp them, since they can float mana and then sack the lands to get another untapped land. So they do have access to 5 mana this turn. So they could follow the Thrammy next turn already. And they do have two knights, so one of them is going to survive. Could take one hostage for the time being. And the Knight of the Reliquary can also potentially get another Bujuka Bog to exile my graveyard so we don't get our lands back from the second chapter of Fall the Thran. So, yeah, the second Knight makes things a bit more complicated. Probably just attack with the Freebooter, keep land in hand, and keep up Giant Killer to kill a Knight end of turn. So we'll let them do their fetching first. Probably gets a Fabled Passage here, which is another land going to the graveyard. And then now we'll destroy knights. So with a the land, they could follow the Thran here. But they kind of want one more mana, so they can sack a land to the knight to get Bujuka Bog if they have that. To exile my graveyard before I could potentially get two lands back. Dread Presence, also pretty good with the knight here. That can get Swamp stealing two damage. So... Now what do I do? Probably still hostage take the knight. So they wouldn't be able to follow the Thran me, and we can survive one Dread Presence trigger for the time being here. And it also lets me attack. So they're gonna get maybe Fable Passage into Swamp, or just get a Swamp right away. I guess they also want green mana, so they might get Overgrown Tomb instead. Yep can take out the bodyguards, I can sack it so they don't gain a life, as the ability will fizzle. And we'll take this knight hostage. And get in with the freebooter. So their deck is presumably also playing the Gidrock monster. They've got all the land synergies. Could play a Knight of my own now. Uh, could play a Banalish Marshal number two. Got some options. We could get Fall of the Thrand next turn. So that's also reason to get this Knight going. Fall of the Thrand can also get those Swamps back then on the following turns and Bujuka Bog to exile my graveyard. So there's a lot going on. Lots of moving pieces. I think we just play this. And then I might want a Bodyguard instead of Giant Killer. Protecting Freebooter. And try to ride that to victory. And then just hold my lands in case my lands get destroyed here. One trigger at the Banalish Marshal. Of course, now with the Dried, every land is a swamp. Not sure what their plan is here. Alright, opponent packs it in. Sweet. So 
So yeah, this Asper Humans deck is a lot of fun. Definitely have a lot of decisions too with the meddling mages, the freebooters, the sequencing, when to play stuff out. So it's uh, not the easiest deck in the world to play, but uh, the good news is that it's only going to get better over time. So I would say it's a relatively safe investment from a long-term perspective. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.